to another exciting episode of The Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And anybody new to the channel, I'm Paper Goy. I have a day job, work out of the house, 40,000 items between eBay and Amazon, and tell you kind of what the small guy goes through. And I'm Mr. Magazine uh, with 15 employees. I have uh, about four or 500,000 items online in a warehouse that is almost fully maxed out of inventory. Too much inventory, that is. <laughs> too much stuff. Too <laughs> much stuff. Uh, too much sauce. You know what the kids say these days? Uh, Probably maybe, five, year, maybe, five years maybe, ago maybe they your did. your kids. <laughs> <laughs> five years ago they did. So today we're going to talk about something or other that I definitely have noticed, and you noticed as well, and then you brought it to me as a video idea, and it's absolutely true because we both have, have noticed that it works very, very well. And it's paying a higher percentage. And I know we've done a few videos in the past that a lot of people... Uh, talk about how little they pay and you know the great deals they get because they pay so little yeah and it's definitely true but you if if you always are trying to pay the smallest amount possible you're gonna end up not getting a lot of deals and not growing your business for sure so when when you would mention that to me what yeah. were you thinking of as far as um, you know it really depends on what the items are or the quality of it or the need that I have for it so like um, certain magazines even adult nature magazines they don't come around very often in big quantities you know when they do if it's high quality stuff you know nowadays everyone's looking online for comps so they know what kind of stuff hey you sell this for 20 30 bucks so you know in reality they think they're going to get $10 a magazine but you know you come to agreement you know years ago if someone had a hundred thousand in magazines, I might be able to get them for ten thousand. You know, now if they're offering me twenty, you know, for twenty thousand, I might jump on it. You know, or hey, someone else is offering twenty, they want twenty-five, I may still jump on it. You know, where years ago I say forget it, I'm not interested. It's too much money, um, or the sports card craze. I mean, this it's been crazier than in the '80s, but you can't buy good stuff for pennies on a dollar, even at fifty percent now, because people know, hey, I have a thousand dollar card. I can sell it on eBay for a thousand. Yeah, I pay the fees, but I put you know seven, eight hundred in my pocket. I'm not going to sell it to you for four hundred. So sometimes you got to bring the noise and step up for sports cards, autographs, anything that's in demand and trending. And that's not to say that you can't get good deals by not paying a lot. Um, that does happen. I mean, sure. you have to you have to be in the right place at the right time, though. Right. Um, and you have to be able to read the person selling it and what their intentions are. Um, yeah, sure. You know my my cousin passes away and I'm the closest living relative and I get the house and it's filled with glassware you're and you're a glass dealer <laughs> right. you're gonna get a heck of a deal because yeah. I don't want to deal with it and sure. I don't really care that this stuff is worth you know hundreds of dollars each right. I don't want to learn that that uh, genre I don't want to sit there and pack it all up ship it all out exactly. you know, get returns get yeah. breakage I don't want to do that stuff right, right. so uh, I'm not going to be happy selling it to you for a dollar a piece, but I might sell it to you for five dollars a piece, and you're right. going to get one heck of a deal at that. Sure. Um, but that's few and far between. If the person comes in, and if if, if the cousin came in, and you, you happen to deal in glassware, he's yeah. not going to sell it to you for five dollars a piece. Right. But if it's top of the line stuff that you know you can sell, step up to the plate and pay the fifteen, twenty, twenty-five dollars, whatever it is yeah. you have to pay for the item. And I think that, as you said, everybody's got the, the phone, everybody looks things up, mm -hmm. and but a lot of people pretend that they don't, which I know oh, you yeah. absolutely love. Oh, yeah. Nobody yeah. knows what anything yeah. is worth, and then you make them an offer, and they say, that's it? Well, and sometimes you make them an offer that they know the stuff is good, but they don't know how good, and you don't want to lowball them, so you come up with a fair price, and they go, wow, it's worth that much? Let me hold on to it, or let me shop it around. That just happened to me recently with those older cards I told you about. You know, and it's frustrating, but, you know, if I knew ahead of time they were going to shop it around, I made, made no offer and said, hey, shop it around, then come to me. But I did tell them to give me a, a shot at it if they have any higher offers. Right, right. Yep, yeah. and it's it's difficult. It's a difficult uh, to walk, but we've, we're going to have a video coming out uh, soon. It's going to be actually a, a few different live videos. Uh, well, not live necessarily, but they're going to be haul videos when I'm going to the... Uh, show with my father and I'm going to meet up with primetime treasure hunter there etc cetera, etc cetera, a good friend of their channel and it's going to be the first year that I'm going to be going with a little bit of, of coin in my pocket versus usually sure. you know usually you go there with a couple of hundred dollars five hundred dollars whatever and as I've said before in videos the problem with that is say say I go to a, a antique show and this place has I, I really don't know how many deal, dealers say a thousand dealers yeah and I go to this show with $1,000 in my pocket. Theoretically, I could spend $1 at each dealer. Yeah. Um, 
well, obviously there are dealers there with glassware, et cetera, et cetera, that I don't don't care about because there aren't right. things that I deal with. But I'm going there with a thousand dollars, and I go to the second booth, and they've got decent stuff. Yeah. But it would tie up five hundred dollars. Right, right. I'm only at the second booth on the first day. Yeah, you gotta be smart. Do I want to tie up five hundred dollars? Because what if the eighth booth yeah. has a better deal for a thousand dollars? Yeah, true. So you just don't know. So then you end up walking by the deal for five hundred dollars, which is a decent deal. Yeah. You come back later the second day, and it's gone because it was a good enough deal that somebody else bought it. Right, right. Um, so it's going to be very interesting because it's going to be the first time that I'm willing, not that I'm unwilling to step to the plate, but I've actually yeah. got some resources, some capital. Yeah. And that that's a big part of it as well. Uh, a lot of people watching this starting out may not have a lot of capital. You know, you may be just starting out and not necessarily knowing what you're doing, which there's nothing wrong with. We all started out there. Sure. Um, you may be, this may be your job and, and you may need to pay rent. You may need to put food in your, you know, your baby's belly so yeah if that's your situation i understand completely going around to the garage sales and picking stuff up for a quarter and selling it for ten dollars yeah. i yeah. did that for years uh no no problem at all in fact if i if i do happen to see a garage sale down the street i'll stop by and do it you know nothing wrong sure. with oh wow i just spent a dollar picked up four items i can sell for 40. i mean that's really good return right. on investment yeah but you're kind of unless you get super lucky and stumble across the sale of the century you're limiting yourself at that point. Oh, yeah. And you go to the sale, and they've got the quarter box, and then they've got the stuff they want $20, 25 $30 at, yeah. you know, per item at. Well, you might end up doing a lot better buying the $25 items because they might be $250 items for $25. Yeah, sure. But if you don't know it or you just don't have the capital. So there's nothing wrong if you can't step up to the plate. Right. We've all been there. We've all had cash issues. We've all had things like that. You also, the other thing as well is a lot of times you've got fear. There is some level of fear that you have as well because obviously if I go to a sale and I put 25 cents out on something, yeah, I guess wrong. I'm out 25 cents. Right. I go and I put $25 out, that's going to hurt. Sure. Especially if you're you know new or starting out kind of deal. Yeah. One thing that I think you do have to watch out for, and somebody did comment about it, and we, we did discuss it a little bit in the comments on one of our videos. Uh, do comment, we do answer all comments, and do hit the like button. Definitely would appreciate that. Is you do need to watch out for fake comps. Uh, yes, yeah, De definitely. Why don't you give it, yeah, do you have an example on that? Um, I don't call them fake necessarily, but you know, crazy out of range comps so you know say you have a legitimate item that goes for a hundred dollars all day long someone might put 200 300 500 on it in hopes that they'll get some sucker at some point down the road or that they're the last man standing with the only item but i always tell the customers if you're going to research it always go for sold comps because that's, that's what we're going to base it off of and not even the highest sold because you could have the high maybe it went for 150 one time legitimately but most of the time they sell for 80 to 100. Well, i'm going to base my offer off the 80 to 100 because i know that's what i'm going to get for it so yeah, you know, definitely be careful of the fake comps, high comps. Yeah. Uh, and then there was an example, and we're going to go into it more into a, a video on another day, but there was an example out there that somebody pointed out to me. We, we had done a video about, which you should really check out because it's, it's a pretty good video, um, about going off the beaten path and selling Beanie Babies when nobody else is selling Beanie Babies, being the, being the one person yeah. out there because you can make a living off stuff like that. Um, and they commented that they didn't they didn't think you could make a good living off beanie babies so what i did is i took a look at solds on beanie babies right. and it was one interesting thing there are some that do sell for 125 dollars and they appear to be legitimate sales you know the person's yeah. got 1200 positives and they sell right. beanie babies and so they seem to have a nice little niche yeah but at 100 dollars, there was one person that must have sold 15 to 20 different beanie babies at 100 dollars each wow one bid they had zero positives. Wow. So what probably happened is they probably they probably had a bunch of Beanie Babies that they yeah. wanted to sell yeah. locally. And so they put it up, had their buddy bid on them all, they paid the fees or they canceled all the sales, whatever they, however yeah, they ended up right. doing it. But now he comes into your store, these things sell at, oh, yeah. and you do a search on it, you're like, yeah. wow, he's got 12 of them that sell for $100 a piece. Yeah. Wow, I can give him $300 for this thing. Yeah. And you end up giving him $300 for $50 worth of Beanie Babies. Yeah. Those brothers we know from the past that uh, 
are kind of shady that used to do that. Yeah. Yep. So there's there's a lot of things out there you need to be careful with. So don't necessarily rely on comps if it's outside of what you deal with. Uh, because people can kind of set things up and kind of take advantage of you like that. But if it's in, if it's within the realm that you deal with, and it seems reasonable for what you deal with, yeah. um, you know, you deal with Golden Age comics. After a while, you get a comic book you've never seen before. You can probably trust the comps unless it's way out of whack. You know, because yeah. you deal with them enough, you know that hey, Golden Age comic books in this condition are, you know, even the common ones are you know fifty to hundred dollars. Okay, that sold for two and a quarter. Yeah. Oh, it's got Matt Baker art. Okay, that makes complete sense that that should be that should be that. So, but you're not going to buy that for a dollar unless you yeah. happen to come along to some barn sale and they got some you know sitting in the bottom of a bunch of magazines. They got some old comic books. Exactly. Um, tip to you if you do ha- happen to have that, make them an offer and the entire Foot Locker full of stuff. Don't pull the comics out and say, what do you want for these? <laughs> say to them, geez, you got a bunch of old magazines and paper in the back, Foot Locker. What do you want for the whole thing? I'll take it as it sits. Right. You sure. know, give them $500 for it. Don't start pulling it. Oh, you got a oh, it's cool old Batman costume. Because then yeah. all of a sudden they might say, wait a minute. Hey, that could be really, really good. Yeah, so that's sure. a little insider tip as well. Buy all of it. Uh, get a good deal on it as opposed to trying to cherry pick. Yeah. Yeah, and the chance that they do allow you to cherry pick, you're getting a great deal. But you know something? Buy it all because their nephew might be sitting there and going, hey, old comics are really, really good. Don't sell those. Mm. (laughs) And I'm sure we've all had that happen to us as well where something gets pulled back on us. Sure. Um, So do step up to the plate uh, if if you have the means to do so and it's something or other that you're aware of, Uh, you know, something or other that you know something about. You know, again, don't, don't just jump out there and go, I'm, paying $100 each for Beanie Baby, something like that, because you'll end up going broke a lot faster than you can sell the thing. Absolutely. And that is another thing to think about as well, is how fast do the items sell that you're purchasing. Right. Um, yeah. w- when you're talking about stepping up to the plate, I'm expecting that most of these items, the cards and that, have pretty quick turnover for you. Yeah, definitely. Any current rookies, any hollow, you know, icons, any, yeah, for sure. There's always thousands of people looking for that stuff. So. Yeah, so you're not... You're not paying five hundred dollars for a thousand dollar item it's going to sit around for six months or a year right so hopefully that does help you some gives you a little bit of uh insight into the way that that we're thinking and how you can use it to uh help yourself make some more money because again you can make a living buying things for a dollar a piece and sell them at fifteen dollars a piece no problem at all with that but it ends up being a fair amount of work trust me i know i did it for for 10 12 years now I'm up trying to spend the five to ten to fifteen dollars for one item and selling it for a hundred dollars. Exactly. And it's it's a lot less work. Granted, there's more risk in it and all that sort of thing, but yeah. it's a lot less work, and I, I think it's paying off for me, and I think it's paying off for yeah. you as well. Absolutely. So we will see see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.